All right, well, this was going to be just a little shop update, but I think we are going to go ahead and I'll put it with the uh, Grizzly stuff because that's mainly what it pertained to. Yesterday I started, came out with the intention of working on the drawbar, and um, everything went awry from there. And the, the kind of the overview of it is we've rearranged shop again so I could get the shaper out, which I needed to have the little Atlas shaper out for a couple of reasons. And so we were reorganizing while I did that, while I moved the... Uh, other grizzly mill around where I had better access to it because I've got ball screws to uh, go on the z-axis of it so I'll start working on it again but anyway predominantly what I ended up and worked on was the G075 or yeah the G0755 and uh, I was just addressing issues that I knew were there and uh, you know so I've worked them over and I've kind of finished that up for now so I'll go ahead and edit that video and and you'll get it out with here. Hopefully I won't have too much overlap with stuff, but um, just kind of an overview and one more update on the, on the Grizzly. One of the things that I did do, and I go into more depth on that in the video, is I drilled a access hole, hole right here to get to the, the uh, lead screw bearing for the X-axis, which I talked about before. And I said I was going to 3D print a little plug for that. And this is the first itineration of that. I've got to get some green filament so that I can have fancy little matching you know, we got to stay with our color scheme here on this. But anyway, this is the little plug that I came up with. We just modeled it in Fusion 360. And uh, I just quickly printed it out. You know, it only took a little over a half an hour to print it once I got it. Once I got it set up, I did it this morning. So, and it, uh, it just sets right in there just like that and fills that hole so it's not going to fill up with crap. So, anyway, like I say, hopefully there won't be too much of an overlap in this enjoy the rest of the video hopefully it'll give you some ideas and it'll uh, explain some of the issues that I had with this before that I was covering mainly with the digital readout and the scales so uh, and that's what started everything off bad yesterday is where I'd moved it around while I had a couple of uh, axes that were dead here on the digital readout and it ended up being uh, just a bad connection for one of them and uh, I think I've remedied that where it plugs into the back of the digital readout which has always been a little bit of an issue but um, not a real one and uh, the other was some broken wires where it plugged into the scale on the y-axis and you know I've said before that this digital readout's been rock solid for me on especially this particular one you know where I've got it on several machines now um, it still is rock solid this is nothing that really was wrong with the digital readout this was uh, connections that I'd soldered however many years ago and the scale's been moved around and beaten and abused for several years and um, one of them was just the way the plug sits in the back of the case. Here we are. Here we are. I'm continuing with my little saga here on good and bad of the mill, and right now I'm not real, real impressed. So anyway, what we're looking at here is the back of the column, and we're looking at the worm gear and the lead screw that raises and lowers the head. And I said I'd had trouble with it wanting to stall out or not starting and everything. And I had opportunity to run it quite a ways up today on a little project I was working on, and it wouldn't make it all the way up to the limit switch. So I decided it was time to start tearing into it. And what we've got is a whole lot of grease packed in here. And, uh, you know, it's really impressive looking crap that was down in there. And that in and of itself is okay. But uh, I've got the motor torn off the top, and it's sitting here, sitting right here. And I've just got binding, and there's I said I'd give you the good and bad with all of this. Now, the downside to this, I think, and, and I've made a conscious effort to keep this clean and well-oiled, so it was well-lubricated. Um, the really downside to it is there's no place... On, that's accessible on any of the column area itself to lubricate it. The only way you can lube the dovetails that I found on the on the head to move it up and down is just to squirt some whey oil in on the top of the of the V-ways on it and let it creep down through. So I got it lubed up. It, it's a little bit better now and but it's still got a little bit of a hang in it and where I really notice it is when I lower the head down and I'm, I'm lowering it manually here off of the off of the handle on the side um, it's got a little bit of a hang when you come down with it it seems to go up fine when you get to the very top it's still a little bit tighter but 
everything looks good. I don't see a real, real problem there. Um, I've kind of narrowed it down to about one of three things, and I'm going to have to pull ahead to address those, and I'm really not ready to pull ahead on it yet. It's either the nut is already showing quite a bit of wear in it, and it's wallowed out and wanting to bind on the screw, and the screw looks okay, although you can't really tell anything by looking at it. Um, it's either that, it's the um, little stub that sticks out and goes in and mounts to the, mounts to the back of the head, um, you know, on the swivel portion that, that attaches it there. That may be loose a little bit. I found everything else to be kind of loose on this. All the, all the screws on the back of the access cover, the motor on top, the, the, you know, the elevation motor and stuff. Nothing's been really that tight on it to where it could be, you know, it could have been a little bit tighter. So it may be loose in there, um, or there may be some issue there. Like I say, I really can't tell. I don't think the Gibbs are out of adjustment. It feels pretty good through most of the travel, um, but it's got that hang almost like you'd you'd uh, lock the uh, lock the column in position. You know, if you'd run the uh, run the the table locks on there um, on the vertical column when you lower it down, why it's got that clunk clunk clunk, almost like that's dragging. But um, everything appears to be pretty good. I don't see, and it's not through the entire travel. Um, so I tend to believe it's something there, maybe just either worn or out of adjustment. So I'm sure that's going to get torn down. But I thought I'd show you a little bit of the rest of it while I was here. Uh, when I do put it back together, well, I'm probably going to play with adjusting the, the uh, gib on that and see if that makes a difference. But like I say, it doesn't really feel like, a, like an adjustment problem there. I think it's probably in the, in the mechanism where the head's attached to the column itself. Um, what I found... The column is hollow, of course. Down in the bottom, it's hollow going down through. So if, for instance, you drop one of the keyways in the, in the um, either the motor or at the top of the uh, lead screw up there, why well, it's going to fall all the way down through the column and all the way down to the floor. So you're going to have to tear the access covers off the side and fish for it off the floor. But uh, that's not, a, not that big a deal. The, the main thing I don't like is no... There's nothing, no system in place to be able to lubricate it, whether it's either oil or grease, you know. So um, we got lots of grease still stuffed in here, and I've oiled it up just to see if that was going to work with it. Now, machining on it has been um, relatively poor, which I kind of expected. On the top of the column, why the, the motor, of course, for the elevation is on the very top, it bolts to this plate here, which is here. And I figured out these little screws are just uh, dowel pins that they've drilled and put in there. These are the four holes that mount the motor to the top of the column. And then these four holes, countersunk holes, are what bolt this to the top of the column. Um, there's some machining on the bottom of this. Which is, you know, it's, it, and it doesn't matter. All it is is the cover and, and supporting the, the column. The, the uh, lead screw itself floats free on top. Um, and with the motor off, now I know that I'm not binding in the screw itself by alignment there. But anyway, the thing that I was not impressed with is on the very top of the column, between, the, between this cover plate and the column itself, uh, there's all kinds of nice gritty stuff. And there again, it's, it's pinched in between, it can't really go any place, but um, it was not cleaned at all. It looks like they slammed the top on and then drilled and tapped it right there and, and bolted it together without without cleaning it at all. Um, see if we've got a fairly clean place on the on the rag here. And this is what we got up on top. So it's uh, it's pretty rough and pretty gritty up there. So I'll have to clean it a little bit before I before I bolt it back together. But anyway I just thought I'd give you a little little update on what I found so far. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it, and then I'll probably try and adjust Gibbs a little bit. Um, at some point, I'm sure we're pulling the head off so that we can see what's going on with that um, and figure out exactly where it is. Back to the same old question, would I buy this mill again if I know what I know right now? I'm not as positive as I would as I have been in the past. I'm still not unhappy, and ultimately this would make a very good CNC conversion, I think, uh, because everything that's wrong with it would be addressed when it, with a conversion. So, but anyway, that's not going to happen in the in the near future. We're going to get the other the other mill uh, back up and running full CNC control, and this is our manual mill for now. So we'll see what happens as time passes. All right, 
Well, I have managed to get it to run fully through its travel, at least up at the top. I haven't messed with it down at the bottom yet. I've got it all put back together, and I've been adjusting gibbs on it, and I've got the crap oiled out of it, more than it should have to have on there. But anyway, it does go all the way up. It's not, I don't. I think it's going to be a problem one way or the other as, as time goes on. But it will run up to the limit switch at least now, but it's really starting to strain along here, so... But there we at least hit our limit switch. It seems to have stopped its binding coming down at least to a certain degree. I ended up and tightened up the gib a little bit, and uh, maybe that's what it took. But it seems to have lost its clunk clunk going down now. So whether it's because I've got a lot more lube in there, or because it was maybe the gibs were a little bit, or the gib was a little bit loose and it was allowing it to to. Uh, lean or wedge sideways a little bit and uh, causing it to bind. So we'll run it, we'll play with it, and we'll see what we come up with. Well good morning. Playing in the shop again today. This was actually going to be a day I was going to work on the power draw bar. So I was going to shoot a little power draw bar video for you and show a little more machining on that and um, I was going to call it a day and the best laid plans of course. and. Today is one of those days when it's been a little bit frustrating already and it's just a little afternoon now so I haven't really accomplished anything on power draw bar and I haven't really accomplished anything that I wanted to do yet but anyway I thought I'd give you a little shop update anyway. What started out today is I came out fired up the mill and I've rearranged stuff again you'll see and I'll show you there's you know the CNC mill that I broke down which is why I replaced it with the G0755 is now turned around sitting over here. I've moved the little atlas lathe out to where I'm more accessible to it since the last time we've rearranged stuff. Um, and what started all this yesterday was I needed the atlas shaper out. I've got, uh, we're doing a little more pattern making and I've got a couple of things that I need to produce. Actually, I've got a oil tray that I've got a request for, so I'll be casting an oil tray here this week and throw it up on the website. But there was a couple other things that I wanted to build patterns off of on the Atlas Shaper right now. So I needed to get it out, plus I discovered that I set it back out of the way to where I couldn't access the drawers. It had hold downs and index centers and things like that in it. So uh, I spent all day yesterday working on rearranging again. Anyway, since I'd, mo I'd, and I'd moved the mill and the, the tool tower and toolbox around a little bit and everything, so when I fired this up this morning, why the digital readout didn't want to work. I had an access that was dead. So I got... Uh, dinking around with it and trying to figure out what was wrong and it was um, actually a couple of wires had broken from from one of the scales so I have dinked around with that we've got it going again and everything but while I had it that far apart I had uh, mentioned earlier that I'd been concerned that when I mounted the scales and the angle iron that protected the scale on the back of the x-axis why uh, I thought I might have covered up a gets oiler so I wasn't able to access the uh, the oil port on the on the back side of the table and it's been running just on whatever lube was in it until until today actually so I thought while I'm messing with digital readout stuff I went ahead and pulled the x-axis and it's still gonna be a problem oiling because the scale itself the the beam covers where that gets oiler is it's out enough to where I can I can access it I'll probably have to uh, form a a little 90 degree oiler or something to compress that and get the oiler and, and do it. But I've got it oiled up for now and I just machined the uh, machine to slot in the angle. You know, we just drilled it and then then did our, let me get rid of this coffee cup here. And it mounts on the back of the bed, you know, from the front we'd be looking at it like this. But um, So I just drilled it and then machined out the bottom of it. Now I thought about narrowing this down because I do have some rub marks where it's rubbing across on the um, y-axis and at some point I'll probably do that but I would imagine I'm going to have to pull this at some point or uh, I'll plan on pulling this at some point and going ahead and redoing the oil system on the back side of the table so it's a little bit easier to access and what I'll probably do is I'll probably uh, build a custom little oil port for it and then just mount a gets oiler probably in the top of the angle right there so it'll um, shoot it right in there and I can just uh, oil it from the top of the table. So anyway I'm going to put that back together 
and I think while I'm doing my other oiling concern with the table was with the power feed on this end of the table why there's no access to the uh, to the x-axis bearing that supports the lead screw through there so what I think I'm probably going to do is once I get this scale mounted again I'll go ahead and pull this um, the power feed assembly off and see where I need to machine it I'll probably go ahead and, and bore my hole in there today and, and get that done so I'll show you a little bit of that when we get there but anyway for right now I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this because we've still got a guard on here. We've got this little Mickey Mouse guard underneath here. Well, come on now. Might have been easier to do this before I put the scale on the x-axis again. Apparently, just not loose enough. There we go. Okay, so we've got access here, but we don't have access through here. an inch. Yeah, so we're going to want to bore it right through there. Looks like to me. And I could be fancy and pull the housing off. Let's see how it lays out here. I think we will. I think we'll go ahead and pull this housing off. All we've got to do is pull these two screws, it looks like, and disconnect this right here. to the uh, radio here in the background. I'm going to have to find a different channel to listen to. This is uh, seems as though on Sundays they do Seahawk stuff around here, which I guess is okay, but with the way things have gone the last few months and what they've come to stand for, I've decided that I really don't need to listen to 
most professional sports anymore and I don't seem to miss it at all but anyway we uh, just go along and do our thing but I haven't taken the time to to find a different radio station or a different form for music to listen to so anyway now what I think I want to do is we are just going to take and bore us a hole right in the middle down through there and that will give us access to that uh, to that oiling port and what I'll probably do is either just we'll bore it to a standard size hole or else we can um, just bore it to whatever size we want and then put a 3D printed plug in there. Anyway, probably go to about a 3 8 hole or something along those lines. Just where we can lay it out here. there, which should, I believe, probably be a fairly standard dimension here. We go about three and three sixteenths from there, three and three sixteenths from there. Yep, that looks just right. Okay. And then if we come out here, if we do three-eighths of an inch to the center of the hole, Center. Do a stupid check, that looks pretty good. Give that just a little bit of gronk there. Ooh. This is not a high high stress thing. I just want to give it a little bit of little bit of support there. There we go. And I think we'll probably give this about a half inch hole. down through here to get it started since we're right there on that rim.
well that takes care of that. What I think I will do is go ahead and slip the boring head in there real quick and I think I'll just set this down flat because we've got this this rib right here and that'll give me a base to um, put a little 3D plug in there that can bottom out there or a 3D printed plug. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. A little bit of hand work just on the edge of that to smooth it down a little bit. And uh, we'll take some measurements and make a plug out for it. But that can be added later here. Should fit right down on there. We better double check to make sure we do have room. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Looks like we're centered up real nice there. Yeah, that looks really good. So, I'll go ahead, just smooth that edge a little bit, and then we'll put her back together. Alright, one more little quickie today, and then I'm probably about to call it quits. Got a little piece of stainless here, probably started out as three-quarter inch, I'm guessing. And, um, because I just grabbed a piece of stock to fit. And I turned down one end, did a little radius on it, and... I'm, uh, I've got it set up in the mill, kind of set up in the mill. We're just going to give it just a little bit of an angle there. Not that much, just a little bit of an angle. Not quite that much either, about that much. Probably, oh, four or five degrees, I'm guessing. We're going to grunk it down right there. And we're going to face it off at that little bit of an angle. Let's come down here. Then we're going to drill it, we're going to uh, bolt it to our little tool tower in a couple of different ways I could have done it, but this is what I came up with. About there. Presser's running out there. Let's see, let's go back into high range. Let's try right there. If we can't punch a hole through this.
grab a bolt to go in there. We could have gone considerably lower than this, but let's move the camera over here and take a look at it. Yeah, I should have made this considerably lower on here, but that's all right. We may do another one later on. If we were to anchor that on there just like that. We could take our little handle and go just like that, and we've got storage for it. That'll work. So this is a handle, to, the manual handle to raise and lower the uh, column on the mill. So it's been in the toolbox, kicking around a little plastic toolbox. I just figured it was out of the way here, and uh, that'll work for me. Well, there was a whole lot today of getting nothing that I really wanted to get done done, but I did get some other stuff done. So, taking care of, I think, most of the oiling issues on the mill. Um, still haven't, I had a couple of times today, I was playing with the, with the mill head up fairly high and it doesn't want to, uh, doesn't want to move it and wants to hang. I'm going to pull the back cover off tomorrow probably and take a look at it and see what, uh, see what the gearing and the, the lead screw looks like for raising and lowering that mill. It may just be need to be oiled up or greased up and you know we'll see what's going on with that um, got my little handle hung got my holes all taken care of so I've got access to the two oiling points I was concerned about and that's about all I got done I did finish the machining on the on a Dillon conversion that I have to ship out tomorrow and I'll do the final final uh, assembly of it in the morning and it won't take me but a few minutes. And that was the accomplishment for the day. Tomorrow I'll be working on some casting stuff, or at least some pattern work. Um, got to cast up an oil tray for a gentleman that's requested one. So I'll, uh, I'll get that at least well along tomorrow. And I did, uh, I did pick up a little eBay purchase little dial indicator off of eBay. I'm going to set this up on the Sheldon lathe. I'm going to dedicate it, it to the um, to the outboard end of the, the um, spindle. A lot of times I'll run things through the through the uh, headstock and I indicate them both on the chuck end and on the outboard end. And I'm going to dedicate this little dial indicator to it. A little Craftsman. Made in Britain. I've got another one of these that I uh, I like for a whole lot of things, and um, this one's actually in better shape than the one that I've already got. Let's see, is that going to be a, a little bit of glare there? But that gives you an idea of what it is. These are relatively inexpensive. You know, I managed to get a a fairly complete kit with it, which just has a couple of pieces that that mine doesn't have, and uh, actually mine's got a couple that this one doesn't have. So I should have a have a uh, pretty good representation of what came with these, but they're uh, they're made in Britain. This one's uh, you know not not sticky at all. It it zeroes out very nicely and everything. So um, I anticipate putting it to good use for like I say, not very much money at all. So that's going on, and that's about all I've got. Um, got to start working on the CNC mill again, but. Next project will be other than pulling the back off of the off of the uh, column casting and finding out why we're sticky there and the motor's not wanting to to operate the way I think it should. Why uh, the next thing on this mill is we've got to finish up the power drawbar, and uh, I'll be working on it this week. So we'll, there'll be there'll be something on it here later in the week. So anyway, hopefully you found this a little bit entertaining. You know what's going on in the shop for now anyway, and. Um, we did have a little snow today, so winter's here. 
Merry Christmas. You know, we're not quite there yet, but hopefully you found this a little bit interesting. Any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, guys, thanks for taking the time to watch.